Um, second year at Elmhurst was 2003, correct? Correct. So heading into that season, what was the preparation like? Because you had the 64 consecutive losses at Elmhurst, but from everything, all the video that I saw, you guys were really positive heading into the 2013 season. Yeah, heading into that season, we started in November, and uh, we had a bunch of kids dedicated into the weight room. Uh, most of our star athletes that were uh, skill position-wise were in basketball season. But uh, the meat and, and, and potatoes of the group, which was the offense, defense alignment, linebackers and all that, we were in the weight room. And those guys from November all the way up until August of next season kind of, you know, did what it took, you know, to get ready and prepare for that next season. How often did you talk about 64 leading up to that? Well, we talked about it all the time. Uh, if you know, before that, and the previous season, we almost uh, beat Northside and had them 14 to seven and down to five seconds and they kind of edged us out. So, you know, we always talked about it and always talked about breaking that streak, always talking about, you know, make sure you do the things we needed to do to get that win. When you looked at the schedule, you saw 4A number one Bishop Dwenger. Heading into that game, did you think this could be the game? Yes. I was thinking about, you know, I'm always optimistic about every team. And I'm thinking, you know, if we could beat every team. And I knew the kind of talent that we had coming back from that previous year and what they had coming back. I knew we would be, you know, it would be a tough game to get. But I knew we had some firepower to bring into that game and, and, and maybe do some things in it. When you walked into Zollner Stadium that night, did you have a feeling like, okay, did you feel anything special that night? And I, I remember telling them we were going to shock the world, you know, and, and let's go ahead. They're ranked number one. Uh, they're primed for the picking. Um, so when we came in there, you know, they had they had just opened up the stadium and uh, remodeled it. And Concordia and Dewanger both, you know, put the money into it. And they had a ton of people there, had ceremonies and everything. So. You know, I really just wanted to come in and ruin it. At what point during the game did you think, okay, this isn't, this isn't a pipe dream. This could be a reality. Well, scouting them, they came out and same thing they showed us on film. Um, and when we ran down and uh, hit that first touchdown, then we came down and then uh, it was, I believe, on a kickoff that we stripped the ball and got the ball right back and scored again. And then, you know, I started thinking like, hey, we can, if we hold them, we can we can be in this game at the end to win it, you know. And then, as we start moving the ball on offense a little bit more and more every time, and inching it down the field, and and and, and you know making big gains, and then we stopped them on defense several times, you know. By halftime, after we got out of halftime, I was thinking, yeah, you know, let's go get this one. And it, and it gave the kids more motivation, more you know, an edge to go out there and finish that half. I was going to say, talking to Matt and also talking to David, they were both like, at halftime, we were like, yeah, we, we can do this. What, what do you say to those guys at halftime to make sure that uh, they go out with the right mentality, they finish the job in the second half? Well, you know, you always come out and say it's 0-0. Zero, zero. You know, it's halftime, 0-0. Zero, zero. Come back out like you started, you know, and they were ready. I mean, I remember that, that, that locker room where it was fired up. Those guys were not quiet. They were like, hey, let's go out there. Let's make sure we do what we got to do to keep this game in our favor. And uh, they got together, and that's what they did. You know, they were ready. They, they were pumped up at just like the first half, the first quarter. Tell me about James Hardy in that game. In that game, he was, he was, he was, he was good. Uh, Mickey Owens, quarterback, threw some balls up. And uh, he threw him up in the right place for James to go get. And James just went and, like the athlete that he is, he just went and got him. And uh, made some spectacular plays over some DBs who were, who were owning tight. Was James kind of the, I don't know, poster child for, Elmhurst had the athletes walk in the halls, but they weren't coming out for football. And he was kind of the guy that, that made that cool, I guess, in a way. He, he was, yeah, he's more the catalyst that started once we got him out. Um, we had all the skilled players that came from basketball that wanted to come out and had some other players that really didn't touch the field in Elmer's in those previous years that wanted to. So he made it, you know, like you said, almost cool to come out and, hey, I want to play football as well. When the clock's ticking down and you see Elmer's ahead on the scoreboard, what's going through your mind? What are the emotions? Well, 
as as you, I remember the game, the Wenger, you know, as good a team as they are, made made a run in that fourth quarter. Uh, they, you know, we had them by two touchdowns, three touchdowns going into that fourth quarter, and they hit us for two touchdowns and made it close real quick. Um, and and you know, I'm looking at the clock, and I made the, I almost made the mistake of putting the second team in because we were up by two, three touchdowns. And they came back and hit us for one, hit them for another one. Then I put the starters back in and we kind of held on. And as the clock is going down, I got cameras in my face and there's more people in the stands and people were yelling, you know, saying, hey, preservative win, we're going to win this one. And as it clicked at zero, that's when it all happened. I mean, water on my back, Gatorade, everybody jumping up and down, celebrating, 64, no more. You know, all the sayings and the phrases came out. So, you know, I was kind of, you know, just just happy that we was able to get those seniors a win. What Was it relief? Was it enjoyment? Was it uh, a sense of awe? What was the overriding emotion? Was it all of them? Well, really, it was all of them. I mean, it, you had different ones coming from different levels. The freshmen had never, you know, seen that. Uh, that was their first win there. You know, the ones that played varsity, the seniors had never seen a win. So, you know, they're really overjoyed. Um, and then we had a lot of first year players, you know, that didn't know what it took, you know, and what, what, what it would be like to be out there, you know, playing a number one team in the state, playing a good team, period, and able to pull a win off. So it was all the emotions that you can imagine, you know, and the fans were excited. I mean, you know, we had fans coming from everywhere, you know, they were leaving other games to come to this game and watch us at Concordia, you know, no one in the in the world gave us a chance to win that game at all. When you look back on it, how much pride did that uh, reinstill into the Elmers program? Well, it, it it put a lot of pride into it. You know, they were you know we had alumni coming back and calling. You had the uh, the administration and central administration for one community schools talking to the kids, and, and they gave us a pep rally. We had team of the week. Had Indianapolis Coast Team of the Week, uh, had different, you know, organizations coming in and giving us donate stuff. Uh, we had the 21 Alive Team of the Week, Papa John's Pizza, and all that other stuff. So it put a lot of pride into the school football team because a lot of, like I said, for six, seven years they hadn't seen a win, and just to get that win was was very ecstatic for them, and and, and you know. I think it was one of the, a good thing for the whole program. How would you characterize the players that you had that season, that game specifically? That game, coming into the game, you know, they they we try to put in a lot of positivity into them to to give them that courage and give them that that you know that that motivation to go into the game and knowing and give them the edge of saying, hey, you can win this game. We can win this if you do the things that you're taught and told to do. Once you go out there, you fight. You know, one thing that you, a lot of coaches say, you can't teach heart. Those guys had heart, you know. And from that, that offensive line to the running backs to the defensive line and DBs, they had heart. Um, and I remember, you know, even one of our DBs, Travis Posca, came out and played a great game um, and on the defensive side and led, he was a catalyst that led, you know, the defensive team along with Eric Vesey. And those two together, you know, they, they, they did a lot. And the defense really didn't get too much credit for that, that game. But they shut the Wenger down for uh, basically three quarters. You know, and that, that's really unheard of when you talk about a DeWanger team versus an Elmer's team. What do you hope that game and that victory taught your players, taught yourself? I mean, what do you think, what do you think it, what kind of life lesson do you think it taught, man? I mean, is it something you can rely back upon in the future? Yeah, you, you never give up. No matter what the odds are against you, no matter where you're at in life, you never give up. Um, you always do the things that, to make you persevere and get you to the next step and the next level. And uh, that's something that I always instill in all the guys that I coach. Uh, no matter what you do out there, you know, on the field and what the, the end result is when it comes to wins and losses, you always, you know, persevere through any, you know, trial and tribulation and you, you go out there and you fight. Anything else you'd like to add, Coach? No, that's it. Uh, I know that we talk about this a lot. You know, every time I, I get interviewed, this is the first question that a lot of people ask me. But 
you know, I love to talk about it and I love to see those guys again that we, we played with back there against the Wanger. But like I said, it's, it's something that we'll always remember. How much pride do you take in the fact that, you know, when it's one of the games, I guess, in Fort Wayne football history that people remember, that people talk about, and people will frequently say, hey, it's the, it's the greatest upset in Fort Wayne football history. I mean, do you take a lot of pride in that? Yeah, I take pride. I take pride in almost, every, you know, everything I do. So, you know, that game right there is not, not my claim to fame, but it is something that I, I truly do take pride in because it's something that we accomplish, and nobody will ever take that from us, you know, no matter what anybody can say about the other team or what was happening to the other team, nobody can take that away from us because push come to shove and let it be told, we never were supposed to even step foot. I don't care how many players were gone, how many players were not there, how many players they graduated. So they'll never take that away from us.